In this video, I take on another card theme shoot, but this time with a multi-light setup. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that has everything for us photographers. And in this video, I'm going to do a shoot here in my small home studio. So there's a concept behind this shoot and it's a continuation of the last one where we had playing cards in the shot. Well, this time I've gone all out. We're gonna have a full on poker game here and we're gonna try and capture a range of emotions across the set of pictures. Now to do this, I'm gonna welcome back Brian to the studio. Say hello, Brian. Hello. And he's gonna be our poker player who's gonna have a bit of an interesting roller coaster ride. There's gonna be thrills, spills, and ultimately, I'm afraid, Brian, you're gonna lose all your money. Such is the way of the world. Okay, but to do it, we need to set up some lights. So let's set this up one light at a time. So whenever you start with a complex lighting setup, at least anything with more than one light, the best place to begin is with your key light, your main light. And for this, my main light is gonna be, well, this guy right here. This is the, the Flashpoint Streak Light 360, and I just got it on a small beauty dish. So this is gonna be the key light that lights Brian, but I'm working in quite a tight space here, and I need to think about where I position the light. Now, knowing something about the inverse square law means that I know if I keep this light nice and close to Brian, it'll light him really well, but the fall off will mean that the background will stay quite dark. And that's important to me because it means I can light the background separately. Now, if you want to find out more about the inverse square law, check out the Adorama Learning Center, where there's tons of information about how this inverse square law thing works. Once the light's in roughly the right position, I reckon that's probably about right there, we need to meter, so let's grab the light meter. We'll pop it underneath Brian's chin, pointing back at the light. And I can get a, a flash meter reading here, so I'm getting F16, so that's just a little bit bright. I think I want uh, an aperture of about F11. So let's just dial that down one stop, and I can do that here on the remote. Take another meter reading, and sure enough, it says F11. So that set the light correctly, I'm going to dial F11 into the camera and we'll take a test shot and see how it goes. Okay, Brian, here we go. Brilliant, so there we go, that works really nicely. You can see that Brian's nicely lit, we've got some excellent illumination, but that background has stayed nice and dark. It's a kind of a contrasty light, but that's the look I want to go for for this shot. So the second light in this setup is actually two lights. I want two equal and identical lights, just to, to rim light the edge of Brian, just to separate him from the background. So I've got one of my Rove Light 600s on one side, I'm gonna add the second one here and try to, try to get it exactly the same, same power and roughly the same angle and height. But before I do that, I need to make sure it's turned on, which it is, and also set it so it can fire when the Streak Light 360 fires. So these are different lights. They have a radio trigger, but they don't work together. So instead, what I'm gonna do is switch on the optical slave for the Rove light. So when it sees the streak light fire, the Rove light fires as well. And most flashes will have this function. Once that's turned on, I can just elevate this up, get the angle about the same. And I'm just trying to get it so the light just hits the, the side of Brian's head and it's just coming in just slightly from behind as well. And I'll get some spill onto the table to add a little bit more light there too. Okay, let's just take a meter reading for these and see what we get. So I'm gonna meter just for the, the side light. So I'm gonna get my meter reading from Brian's shoulder, pointing back at the Rove light. So that's reading F16. So that's roughly one stop more light on the shoulders than on the face. That should give a nice glow on the shoulders, but there's only one way to find out. Let's take a shot. Here we go. Yeah, so you can see that that really gives some lovely highlights around Brian's shoulders. There's a little bit of light in the hair. And again, it adds to that slightly contrasty feel. And the elevated lighting positions adds to the whole mood of the shot. So the last light is just gonna be for the background only, really. It's uh, another one of the streak lights. This is the, the lower wattage 180 streak light. And it's just gonna fire a bit of light up here just to light that part of the background, just behind Brian, really. 
How much light does it need? Well, it needs as much light as your background requires. So if you had a, a white background, you'd obviously need less light than if you had a black background. This is a gray one, so it's something in the middle. I don't know what the right power is. Let's take a meter reading and see what it says. F22, well, that sounds pretty bright compared to everything else. Remember, I'm shooting at F11 throughout. But you've got to remember, I'm lighting a dark surface here. So that might be right, it might be too bright, it might be too dark. There's only one way to find out, take the shot. And I reckon that looks just about right. There's just that little circle of light behind Brian just to separate him out from the background without overpowering the background and overpowering the shot. So there we go, we've got everything ready. We've got our set prepared, our lights are ready to go. Brian, are you ready to go? Yeah. Okay, we're gonna do a shoot, let's do it. Okay, so I think we need some cars, right? Don't you? Here we go. So there we go, that was great fun to do. Did you enjoy that, Brian? Yeah, it was loads of fun. Fantastic, we've got chips everywhere, we've got cards everywhere, but what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get my favorite picture into Photoshop and we'll do a little bit of work on it and we're gonna do that right now. Don't forget to check out Adorama's latest contest and your chance to win amazing prizes. Well, now I've had a chance to sit down and look at the images, I can see that Brian did a brilliant job at showing a range of emotions. As a result, I think the images look best when you see more than one, when you see that range of emotions through the shots. So how am I gonna do that in Photoshop? Well, I'm gonna create a triptych, three images on one single sheet of paper or one single image. Now I've gone through and I've sorted out my favorite images, so let's have a little look. I think these three kind of sum up the whole emotional roller coaster. So let's just select one, hold shift, select another, hold shift, so click on the third, and then I can right click and choose Open in Camera Raw. Now that'll open all three images in Camera Raw, and that's handy because now I can do the same thing to all three images. In fact, I've done a little bit of playing around here just to get us going, but if I click on the Select All button, you'll notice that all of the three images on the left are now highlighted. And that's important because it means that I can do one thing to the image on screen and have it affect all of the other images at the same time. And what I'm gonna do is come over to the effects here, and I'm gonna add in a border, because when these are joined together, I don't want them just to sort of bang up next to each other. I want a nice little curvy edge border, and I can do it here in raw, which means it's non-destructive. So I'm just gonna increase the amount of the post-crop vignetting all the way up to maximum. And I know what you're thinking, that's absolutely hideous it's actually gonna get worse before it gets better because now I'm gonna change the midpoint all the way down to zero like that, and yes, it has got worse. Then I'm gonna take the roundness and I'll take that down to the left as well, minus 100, and now you can start to see this border starting to take shape. It's a little bit soft and fuzzy at the edges, so let's just take the feathering for that and remove it all the way down to zero to get that nice hard-edged border. And you'll see that all three images have the same border treatment, although I've only had to do it to one. 